today's video, we're gonna be discussing the five basic fundamental things that I think every new jiu-jitsu student should know. So today's advice is gonna come from a black belt. So my name is Chase. I've been teaching jiu-jitsu for over eight years now, right? I've been a jiu-jitsu student for 10 years and these are just some few things that I can give my advice to you. Thing number one, why are you training? So this is a very important thing that we do on anything that we decide in life, right? Why do I wanna buy this house? Why do I wanna buy this car? Why do I wanna do these things? The same thing should be in jujitsu. Now, here's what most people don't know about jujitsu. They don't know that there's multiple facets of jujitsu. They don't know that people can train for multiple reasons, and they don't even know that there are multiple options to train for jujitsu, right? Do you wanna train for self-defense? Do you wanna train for sportive application? Do you purely wanna train for health and fitness? Do you wanna train just to be a part of something, to be a part of community? Those are all valid reasons to train, but when you go and sit down and you start picking a school that you wanna train at, make sure you at least have some decisions in mind. You could want to do all of those things. All those things may be a factor for you, or you may just say, I just want self-defense, I don't really care about sport, so I want a school that really teaches self-defense. Or you may say, hey, I, th I think self-defense is cool, but this school really does a lot of sport, I like the instructor, I like the people. So these are all good reasons on why to pick a school. You just have to decide why are you picking that school. Thing number two. Now this is gonna be a thing that some people may disagree with me with. I would really suggest you have the mindset that you're gonna be training jujitsu for a minimum of one year. Now, why one year? Why not, ah, I just wanna try it for a little bit, I try it for three months, and then I'll see if I like it. I mean, we know with everything that we do, if you study anything, you learning it for just one time, or spending one or two weeks or a few months on something, you're gonna get better, and you're gonna kind of learn it, but you're really not gonna be able to apply anything with effective value. The same thing with jujitsu. I tell students all the time, when they come in here, and if you train for a minimum of a year and you focus on the self-defense aspect, you learn all the basics and fundamental techniques, you will be able to protect yourself against a lot of people and feel very confident in your skill set. If you do it for just a couple months, you kind of paid two months of tuition and wasted your time. The other thing for training for a year is typically that's how long it takes you to get, if you're an adult student, your blue belt. Typically most schools, you start out a white belt, the next belt is a blue belt. And it takes about a year at most schools. Same thing for kids. Okay, I know some schools, they promote their kids a little bit faster. I know at, at my academy, we promote our kids if they're coming about two times a week on a regular basis, they get, can get a belt on average about once a year. Okay, thing number three. If you're a new student, okay, jujitsu is so fun, so crazy to learn, you're gonna wanna learn everything. Don't do it. Focus on the basics and fundamental techniques and the basic concepts of what makes jiu-jitsu work. But I commonly see this all the time. After students start training with us for a few months, they feel like that for some reason, they know all the basics and they get bored. When I was a new student or a white belt or a blue belt, I loved the basics. That was like, I couldn't even remember them. So I just wanted to keep training that same thing over and over again. It was frustrating to me when we would move on to a new concept and I didn't see the technique for another like six months or, or something like that. And it was very hard for me to kind of get my bearings straight. If you can have an academy that really has a basics and fundamentals program, and a lot of them vary, and they're all good and great. They can have different ways that they do it. They can be more self-defense based. They can be more sport based. But if they have a program, focus on that program. Basics and fundamentals. What it does is it kind of creates these blinders, right? Jiu-Jitsu is very wide. There's a lot to look at. I think some of the experts in jiu-jitsu, people who have been doing this for a lot longer than me, they've estimated there to be over 600 to 1,000 techniques. And there's new ones being created every week. It seems like on the internet, I see a new technique every week. You have to have laser focus in the beginning. Focus on these basics and fundamental core principles of something. Really own that before you move on to anything else. If you're trying to spin around and do all these other things and branch off to all these pieces, it's gonna slow you down. And if your ultimate goal is to achieve a blue belt 
or to really get the most bang for your buck after training for a year, focus on the things that you know you have the capability to do. Make sure you do your research about your school, see if they have a basics and fundamentals program or how do they progress their students. Ask those kinds of questions whenever you go to visit the school. Now, number four. This is an interesting point. This is something I get asked by students and newer students who have friends that train jujitsu. How often should I spar or even when should I start sparring? Now in the jujitsu culture, we call sparring, it's referred to as grappling or also in the slang word is, is rolling. So if you ever hear, if you go to a jujitsu academy and you hear an instructor say, okay, we're all gonna partner up and we're gonna do a roll. And you're like looking around, you're like, I have zero idea what that means. That typically means some kind of sparring. A lot of schools just look at sparring as two guys kind of shake, they bump knuckles, shake hands, say we're friends, and they just try to go after each other and they try to choke each other as fast as they can. And why that can be fun, if that's a type of physical outlet that you enjoy, right? Rolling around, trying to stop the other person, you're trying to get them, they're trying to get the best of you. It can be fun, but for some people, it can be very nerve wracking. People have typically two reactions. One, they love it. Or two, they hate it. <laughs> That's the reason why they stay at the school. They stay at the school because you got to spar and they got addicted to that and they love the physical outlet it brings. Or two, they hated it because they didn't know any techniques. This is their first day. They maybe learned the techniques in class. If they've never done any kind of wrestling before, they've probably never done any grappling. Now they just got beat up the whole time. They're like, man, that was terrible. So that's why people quit jujitsu. And there's a lot of jujitsu people that will say, well, that person's not tough and jujitsu is not for them. No, you made jujitsu terrible for them, right? That's what it is. That's your fault. That's not the student's fault. Now, some students are ready for it. They don't mind and they're ready to go. So it's this weird balance of when should I start sparring? Because Jace, you just said that you could do either two things. And typically most schools now, what I see is they kind of have a guideline. Some schools allow the sparring on the first day and some schools don't. Um, and the way that they separate that is in their basics class, they maybe don't have sparring or if they do have sparring in their basics program, it's very what we call controlled sparring or focused sparring. Some schools, they just say, okay, hey, you're just gonna spar. And then if they catch you in a, in a submission, make sure you tap or don't get hurt. If you tap too late, it's your fault. So to answer your question is my suggestion is ask the instructor when you go to visit, hey, what are your guys' sparring protocols? How often do you guys roll? Do I spar in the basics class? Do I have to spar on the first day? What do I wanna do? Then after you figure that out, then you can now decide what you want to do. If that sounds fun for you, go for it. Go spar, if that instructor allows it, go try it out. It's extremely addicting. But if you're a person that that intimidates you, ask the instructor if you don't have to spar. Can you wait? Can you just watch and observe? You know, are you gonna make me do this? Kind of figure out what their vibe is about it. Now, how often should you spar? If you're going to class frequently, and you're wanting to spar, like I said, you gotta ask that question, do I have to spar or can I say no to sparring? Kind of figure out what the school's vibe is because every school does it differently. But I really recommend most people, if they, if they can spar, spar at the end of every class if it's offered, just to kind of get the mat time. But two days a week is what I recommend everyone be able to do. You should be able to train two days a week and spar two days a week. And that, that's okay for your body. Now, obviously the more, uh, whenever you start sparring, you start to use way more energy. You start grabbing and gripping and wearing yourself out. In the beginning, it's gonna take a little bit more out of your body. As you build up, you'll be able to control those variables a little bit better and you won't have to worry about all those things and feeling as fatigued the next day. Thing number five, when should I do my first tournament? So, this is what pe people ask me about this a lot and this is kind of my own two cents. When should I do my first tournament? Uh, going back to basically point number one is, are you even interested in doing a tournament? It, you, you may not even know jujitsu tournaments were an option, right? So maybe now you come into the school on the first day, you're like, man, I look for self-defense, but you know, I hear all these guys talk about tournaments. That kind of sounds cool. I competed a little bit in high school or in college. I maybe want to try that. That's cool. So when should you start your first tournament. Should it be a white belt? Should it be blue belt? Should I train for a week? Should I train for six months? How do I know what to do? My 
baseline thing, my general line of thinking, and I'm kind of categorizing this for every jiu-jitsu school, whether you roll on the first day or you don't, is around three or four stripes on your white belt. This is gonna put you closer to training for probably consistent training at that. Not just, you know, I've had a membership for eight months and I don't go but consistently training for about eight months to 10 months probably. If you're three or four stripes on your white belt, you're probably, you know, been training eight to 10 months and you have enough tools to play with. Whether that's just going to the basics program and now you're starting to do the advanced program or, you know, you've been sparring since day one. Well, now you're even more ahead because you've got eight months of training and sparring and you're very used to kind of the the routine of what jujitsu is or sparring is. I did my first tournament <laughs> at one stripe of white belt and it was chaotic. I just didn't know what was going on. It was crazy. There was things everywhere, but I now can use that experience and tell other students, hey, I, I you know, think that you guys should wait a little bit longer. If you're just so competitive happy, man, and, you're, and your sole goal is to do sport, and there could be that. There, you could be your, this person we're watching this right now that your number one goal is to become ADCC world champion from day one. If that's the case, you need to be picking your school that's best for you. And now this is all leading back to the very first point of making sure you really research the school. Figure out what do you want out of this? Do you want self-defense? Do you want sport? Do you want fitness? Do you want all those things? And find out if that school is a good fit for you. Kind of have this checklist of these things, these five things that you can think about whenever you go visit an academy. It really makes your decision-making process much easier. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I'm planning on doing some more of these videos about kind of jujitsu concepts and mindsets that can help you in your jujitsu journey along with techniques and um, some other things. So if you guys have any suggestions, please comment below. Please like and subscribe and share the video and hopefully uh, this continues down your jujitsu journey. So keep at it. See you guys.